Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCA, and creator of the CCNA Writing and Switching Version 3 Complete Video Course. And in this video, you're going to learn a new topic on the CCNA exam. It's BPDU Guard. That's a spanning tree protocol enhancement, and you're going to learn all about it in this video. Stay tuned. In our last video, we talked about port fast, and we said that with port fast, we could cause a switch port to transition almost immediately to a forwarding state when we plug something into that port, like a laptop or some other type of in station. Otherwise, if we didn't do that, we might have to wait for 30 seconds, 15 seconds of listening, 15 seconds of learning for a grand total of 30 seconds. So we love port fast, but we made a promise to the switch. When we went into that switch and applied the port fast command to that port, for example, here, switch SW4 has port fast enabled on fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1. We made a promise saying, I promise I am not going to plug in another switch or something else that might cause a layer 2 topological loop. However, is it possible that we might forget? Maybe we disconnect that laptop. We just needed it for a few moments. Maybe we're doing some testing. And then later on, we're trying to connect in another switch to this switch. And we think, hey, there's a free port. And even accidentally, we might plug in a switch to this port that has previously been configured for port fast. And that could, depending on how we wire things up, that could cause a layer two topological loop or broadcast storm, all sorts of havoc. But the good news is, PortFast has a loop prevention mechanism built in. After we enable a port for PortFast, if it sees BPDUs arriving on this port, it's going to realize, oh, I've been lied to. They promised me there would not be any BPDUs coming in on this port, but there they are. And PortFast will eventually, and that's the issue, it will eventually transition to a blocking state. However, it doesn't do it immediately. There might be a brief time where we have issues on the network, where we have a broadcast storm. We don't want that. Fortunately, there's another spanning tree feature that can cause that port to start blocking. Specifically, it goes into an error disable state as soon as it sees the first BPD arriving on that port that was previously configured for port fast. Now, this feature is called BPD guard, and like port fast, we can enable it on a port by port basis, or we can enable it globally. And what happens again is a port is going to go into an error disabled state if it sees a single BPDU. For example, here on switch SW4, we've got interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1 enabled for port fast. And maybe we take a laptop and we plug into that port. That's what we intended to use port fast for. But then maybe time goes by and we disconnect the laptop and somebody comes along and they plug a switch. SW5 in this case. We've now plugged a switch into this port enabled for port fast. Well, as switches do, they'll be sending out bridge protocol data units, or BPDUs. And when this BPDU goes into switch SW4, alarms go off. The switch port says, I'm going to go into an error disabled state because I just received a BPDU on a port that was enabled for port fast. And that's going to prevent this layer 2 topological loop from happening. Now, let's see how to set this up. Again, the assumption is we've already configured a port for port fast if we're going to turn on BPDU guard on that port. And here's how we can enable it for a single port. Or we could go into interface range configuration mode. But here, let's say interface fast ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 1. And we say spanning hyphen tree BPDU guard enable. If we want to turn this on globally, which will enable this on ports that have port fast configured, we can say spanning hyphen tree port fast BPDU guard default. To verify that we have BPDU guard enabled on a port, we can say show spanning hyphen tree Summary, and about the fourth line up from the bottom, we can see port fast to BPDU guard default is enabled. That's our confirmation that we've got BPDU guard enabled on the switch. However, let's think about this for a moment. We said that if a BPDU is seen on a port, we're going to go into an error disabled state. The question is, how do we get out of that state? Well, after we clear the condition that caused the state, we certainly want to do that first, but after we've resolved the condition, to get out of that error disabled state, we can do something called bouncing the interface. And by bouncing the interface, I mean that we're going to go into that interface. We're going to go into interface configuration mode. We're going to say shutdown to administratively bring it down. And then we'll say no shutdown to bring it back up. And that will return that port to normal operation. 
If you want to learn even more about Cisco routing and switching technologies, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen and I'll send you more training videos. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.